Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Well, there's been a lot of talk about uh, whether we'll be seeing stagflation uh, with still some fragility in the economy combined with monetary inflation. And uh, what would seem to be partly a reflection of that is the big rebound in the price of Bitcoin as a hedge uh, alongside gold, uh, though Bitcoin, of course, far more volatile. And there's also this new Bitcoin ETF coming out this week. So uh, what do you make of the overall situation and do you see a further rise in Bitcoin ahead? Yes. Uh, first of all, your question regarding the stagflation issues, uh, we do not believe that stagflation will be coming in the future, but rather it should be short-lived uh, in a sense that if you look at the demand for inflation side, uh, the overall consumption is reasonably good due to wage increase of above 5%. Uh, but as for the cost push inflation, uh, we think that this is pretty much related to the energy shortage in a short-term period and that uh, this should not last for very long so therefore inflation pressure should gradually dwindle down as we go into the next year so all in all the stagflation should not be the key issues for the Bitcoin uh, prices rising but rather when we look at the Bitcoin prices we do think that this can remain to be fairly high uh, because when you see the what's happening to the M1 growth rate of U.S., um, it seems to be slowing down quite significantly since the beginning of the year till now until July, but it has risen again recently. Now, if you calculate the number, it comes out to be about 16% growth rate year on year. Uh, as long as the overall money supply growth rate, particularly by the Fed, uh, and MO and M1 growth rate remains to be very high in two-digit growth rate, we think that that means a value of currency uh, goes down uh, because of the liquidity, and therefore there will be more interest towards the value for the bitcoins or cryptocurrencies. Um, as you know, the cryptocurrency are used as an alternative asset to the cash uh, per se. So uh, because of that, as long as the value of the holding cash goes down by increasing the money supply, uh, we think that interest towards buying Bitcoin will remain to be fairly strong. So we think that uh, we don't think uh, stagflation will happen. Uh, but nevertheless, we think that the Bitcoin prices will remain very strong over the next a few years. Well, we have seen continued strength in stocks on Wall Street. Uh, they continued to recover on Monday. Investors watching corporate earnings, uh, of course, also the China uh, economic situation, uh, growth coming in lower than expected there. Uh, the S&P up for a fourth session in a row. What's the story in the global markets? Right. Most of the people have been worried about the stagflation uh, and that might result into U.S. interest rate hike earlier than expected. And therefore, the market did go down quite significantly in September till the early October. Uh, we did see S&P goes down by about 6% and NASDAQ going down by about 8%. But uh, since bottoming out uh, about a week ago, uh, if you look at the U.S. Uh, market, it has risen quite nicely. NASDAQ is up more than uh, close to 6% now from the bottom, and uh, S&P is up about 5% plus. Uh, now, we've been saying that this will happen as long as the earnings come in at strong number, and that's what's happening since the Wednesday of uh, last week. Um, if you look at the uh, EPS numbers, uh, so far, 41 out of 500 companies have reported the third quarter results, and 80% of them topping the EPS expectation once again. Uh, second quarter was good year, uh, good quarter, but now third quarter seems to be good as well. And that number is rising year on year basis of about 30%. So uh, this is a very record high level of earnings, despite the, all these concerns about the inflation pressure, margin pressures, and whatnot. Uh, and everybody seems to be worrying about China slowing down, but it seems that that doesn't seem to be affecting the U.S. companies' earnings growth numbers. So all being said, that um, we think that as long as earnings are strong and return on equity is high, we think the U.S. market will have a further room to rise in the future. 
And here in Korea, stocks uh, trading higher today, too. Uh, net buying by foreigners and institutions. And we see uh, the Kosdaq uh, back above 1,000 points for the first time uh, since the start of this month. Uh, tell us about the domestic market. Right. Uh, yesterday, we saw a cost be rising above 3,000 level. Now it's at 3,030 or so. Now, uh, the cost stack also recovered nicely to well above 1,000, ended at 1,005.35. Uh, cost B was up 0.74 percent. Cost stack was up 1.16 percent. Uh, we think that this is a good trend, uh, given the fact that foreign investors are the ones that are buying of Korean equities. Uh, they have purchased so far of $146.4 billion today. Uh, institution also net by $181.9 billion, while retail investors, who have been the major supporter of the equity market, are the selling the uh, equities. And I guess they've been too worried about the possibility of a Korean market going down further on the basis of the recessionary pressure of the U.S. Uh, they're quite panicky at this point, but I think that, you know, as you know, retail investors can be very uh, short-lived in terms of the uh, purchasing, uh, actually, uh, investing period side. So we see that the foreign investors coming back is good, and also we see that the Korean one appreciating is a good trend as well. Uh, we've been saying that the Korean one should not further depreciate that much. Uh, we do think that over the next 6 to 12 months, uh, Korean one can appreciate uh, to maybe 1150, even lower to 1120 level from the current uh, peak of 1190. Uh, when we say that, it's because Korea's interest rate is higher than U.S. Also, if you look at the trade surpluses, it's uh, very strong, and the current account surplus is also very strong. Uh, all in all, uh, it seems there's no reason to say that the Korean one can further depreciate on the basis of fundamentals. So if, if this continues, then net foreign investing should improve. Uh, and as we go into next year, uh, as long as Korea remains to be very strong in their export and manufacturing side is remain to be strong and resilient, then we think that the Korean equity market can do better uh, than what we've been seeing in the last several months. Right. We have seen uh, the exchange rate come down from 1199 down to under 1185 now. Uh, and finally, Mr. Yu, oil prices have continued to inch higher, though easing that rise today. A West Texas Intermediate at about the highest it's been in seven years. Uh, what do you see happening with oil, given all the uncertainty about supply and demand? Right. Uh, if you look at the really what's been happening to the oil price and the petrochemical industry, um, that sector has been the uh, least performing sector in the last seven years. And now, finally, for this year, it has outperformed the index. But if you compare for the five years period, still uh, the petrochemical sector are one of the biggest underperformer of the market. Um, now, well, why that's happening is what's happening to the energy industry. Uh, more and more fossil fuels will be refused, while the more and more interest towards the alternative energy will rise as uh, everyone is aiming for the carbon emission zero. Uh, and that trend continues, and all the governments are focused on that. We don't think that this kind of energy prices rise will remain to be very strong. The only reason why this year we saw this kind of uh, hike in the uh, fossil fuel related uh, products is because uh, we did see some uh, sharp drop of the alternative energy generation because of the wind flow, uh, wind velocity uh, doing the down towards the summer and the fall of this year. But as the weather gets colder, we think that the uh, that energy sources would further rise. And more and more investments are made in the uh, alternative energy segment, and therefore it will continue to substitute the fossil fuel. So all being said that, um, the price has been high because of supply control. And if you look at the recent uh, inventory level of U.S. and also the rig counts of U.S., it's rising sharply. Last week alone, the rig counts rose by 12 uh, uh, if you add that uh, of 12 weeks, uh, sorry, 52 weeks, then that's over 500 more rigs going in. Uh, so far right now, it's about 445 rig counts. Uh, if you add 500 plus over the next one year, then that is higher than 2018 level of supply. 
uh, then we think that price will be falling quite sharply. So all being said that um, right now is a supply and demand picture where the supply has been very tight, and that's why the oil price is very high. Um, it's not because of such a particularly enormously strong demand side. So we don't think that this kind of prices can remain long-term period. Uh, however, though, uh, because this industry is uh, uh, quite of, uh, tight in terms of supply side, uh, we think that the oil price is not going to rapidly fall. Uh, all in all, we think that the price should be remaining where it is. It's not going to be that much volatile. Uh, and we think that around 70 to $80 per barrel uh, should remain to be sold over the next several months. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, we'll keep our eye on that uh, with your help as always. Uh, we appreciate your insights. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you very much.